So today we are going to study certain things about the the releases, the beam releases. What are the effects of the beam releases are there in a project? When to do, why to do, how to do? What is that effect to the to the structural changes? Okay, what are the different types of releases are there? What is partial release, partial fixed? Right. So this is the release function. What are the beam releases means? So whenever there is a release button is there. This this dot which represents the release. Whenever you are dealing with the with the model, let's say any particular ETAS model for that sake. Now you need to give certain releases at some places. Let's say these two beams are the real beams. I'll just give some property to that beam. Let's say this is the concrete beam. I need to unlock this model. And then I'll give this as a concrete beam. Now, and these two beams, I need to release it. Release it means what happens is the fixity would be released. I mean, it will not be the fixed at these two ends the other two ends it will be released means the, it will be the simply supported we will we'll get into that in detail right so how to release it you go to the assign frames and the releases this option or the partial fixity and you give the releases generally the release button which is moment 22 and moment 33 uh, directions are there so we'll see the what is 2233 torsion and uh, the sign conventions and all actually and uh, we'll give the release button over here so you can see that this is a dot now this dot represents basically the the release button okay so m2 2 and m33 and torsion So if you, if you know the, uh, we have seen the local axis coordinate system and the global axis coordinate system, if you remember that, let's say for example, if this is the I section and the force is acting in this direction. So this is always one, one, this is R, which is in, we call it as one direction one, which is in R means the red in color. So I'll not, I'll not give this as a red. This is one, direction one, then G, which is green color, Th that is direction two. So this is direction two and the B, which is blue in color, that will be direction three. All right. So these are the local axis coordinate system of a uh, of a particular element whether that is a beam element whether that is a column element or whether that is a brace element what is beam this is beam this is column and this will be the brace elements so in all the three cases you will see that the the um, the local axis coordinate system is uniform one two and three okay so if you are getting confused with this, I'll just try to tell you that imagine that there is a this is a beam. This is a simple, uh, you know, the scale. Imagine that this is I section, all right. So in this beam, what happens is whenever you give the load on this beam, what will happen? This will start bending in this direction. Now this bending will be if you take the circle of this uh, uh, the center of the circle where it is, it will be here. Okay, so this particular axis is 3. This axis is 1. Okay, so one M11 is always the torsion. Alright, this is in, in this direction it is 1, in this direction it is 2 and in the this direction it is 3. So whenever you are giving the, the force on this, this beam, what happens is the bending moment will be about the 3 direction. Okay, so this is this is 2, 2 direction this is 3 3 direction and the torsion is like this this is the torsion all right so this is what we have uh, you know uh, seen this over here 
so here you can see that this is m22 so the bending moment about this 22 direction is this so this is 22 one one is torsion m22 will be the minor bending moment right and m33 will be the major bending moment Alright, so as you know that let's say for example if I give any kind of load on this beam, imagine that there is a support here and the support at the other end, it will start bending about the three direction. Alright, so it will start bending about the three direction. So this bending moment is the major bending moment. Okay, so whenever we are releasing it, when we come to the releasing option, what we need to do is, let's say for example, in this case, the case 1, okay, in the first case, what will happen is, this is a fixed beam. Let's say this is beam B1, beam B2, and this is beam B3. So, I'll just draw it here. So, if I ask you that you please draw the bending moment of this when there is a uniform load system for this how do you draw it okay the bending moment of let's say this is b1 this is a fixed beam so obviously the bending moment will become something like this all right so and if you take the B2 also it is similar to this so this is B1 or B2 and when it comes to the B3 you want this bending moment would be somewhere like this alright you want this bending moment to be I will just draw it with the dotted diagram why because this is like a simply supported so obviously you will see this WL square by it. Why? Because the loads which are coming from here, let's say the actual loads which are coming from here, it will be, you know, added on this in the 3D diagrams. Okay, on this beam and on this beam, B1 and B2. So we want this to happen. We don't want any of the bending moment. The moment if you take this as a fixed, imagine that this is fixed here. Instead of releases, it is fixed here. So what will happen? This bending moment will get reduced and it will be added here and here. Understood? So are you going to give the top steel here? Now let's take the detailing of this beam B3 so that you will understand this. So let's say the beam B3 I am going to detail it. So how do I detail it? Let's draw it. And from here there will be another shape. I'll just and uh, I'll just imagine that this is the beam that you guys are having this is beam b3 now this is the section of beam b1 the cross section and this is the cross section of b so you are taking the 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 section like this all right so once you do something like this what happens is you will see the reinforcement inside this. So let's draw the reinforcement rebars also. Alright. So how it will be? It would be... Is it like this? Is it like this? No. It will not be like this. Why? Because this is a beam. You will not be anchoring inside this. This anchorage, we will not do it on the side. This anchorage also will not do it on the side. 
so how it will be in the reality in the realistic way it would be something like this only let's say i'll put the rebar like this over here and i'll put the rebar somewhere like this over here and there will be certain stirrups here and there will be certain stirrups over here so you might be thinking that this might be a slab but no consider this as a beam b3 although it looks like a slab but this beam i'll just zoom in a little bit so that you will get it so if you ask me the anchorage length of this you might be knowing the embedded length anchorage length uh, and uh, uh, anchorage or let's say at this place how to see the anchorage length from here to here it will be the anchorage length so imagine that beam b2 will be having 230 as the width so can you provide the 50 times the diameter of the rebar the anchorage length so it is impossible to provide that much amount of anchorage length so that much amount of the bending action the resistance of bending action will not happen i hope you are in sync with me the the resistance see if you are having the bending moment like this let's say for example if you are having the bending moment like this the tension will will be going from here to here and it has to be resisted by some kind of force the, since it is going in that direction the resistance force should come from the other direction which in terms of the, the anchorage so such kind of things doesn't happen why because you are not getting that much amount of anchorage length here that is not possible whereas the same case i'm just copying the same thing as a beam as a column sorry so i what i'll do is i will i will consider this as now it is a column so imagine the instead of beam b1 it's a column so in the case of column what happens is you will have let's say this this will go straight like this right similarly here also it will be something like this over here and it will be something like this imagine that this is a, now it is a column and uh, this is not beam b3 this is beam b2 or beam b1 okay so this also i will okay so what i'll do is i will give this as beam b1 or beam b2 so if you see the my previous diagram beam b1 and 2 is what it's a fixed beam am i right if you see this beam this is a fixed beam all right you can see that up all right so this particular beam what happens is it's a fixed beam so there is a column here column here right so in such kind of situation the bending moment has to be naturally it will go like this now the same question arises do we have the anchorage length so in such kind of cases on the site if you know the if you go to the site the site engineers or the bar benders they will eventually they will do this l on the site what they will do is they will do this l and this l also will be generally in the range of 50 times the diameter why because it's a tension anchorage since you are getting the the space basically from here to here you are getting that much amount of distance from this fiber okay because the resistance will occur imagine that there is a huge amount of vertical force acting on the structure vertically down amount of uh, you know the uh, it is going down so in that case in that case what happens is uh, the bending moment so in this case you can see that the bending moment and all the you will get a lot of space for the resistance this much amount of space you are getting for the resistance right so at this place it will be fixed only this is fixed connection this is also fixed connection all right so if this is a fixed connection and all so how do we you know take care of all this in the mathematical model 
So if you go here in the mathematical model, the fixed beam is nothing to be released. It will be just going down straight up. Only the releases will happen at the simply supported beams. In a in a simplistic way, let me tell you very honestly. In a simplistic way, whenever there is a column, look at this, there is a column there. There is a column here, there is a column here, there is a column here. If there is a shear wall also, it is a, it, it will act like a compression element only. Alright? So once you have such kind of uh, you know the system it will it will give the resistance for the bending so the beams which are connected to the columns and the shear walls you will give that beams is a fixed beam means you will not give any kind of releases by default all beams are fixed beams please remember this by default all the beams are fixed beams understood so you don't need to give releases there you need to give the releases only at the simply supported beams now the problem arises when you are having partial releases now there is a function here what's this partial release you know? huh? how do we give this so can we give this 0.25 so 75 percentage releases is happening 25 percentage release is not there or maybe reverse or something if you give one here what will happen so please understand this this is the kilonewton meter slash radian now this is really crazy now what is this i'll tell you you need to get, get the rotational moment of inertia now this is something different which i wanted to tell you in detail what do you mean by rotational moment of inertia anybody hmm. now this is see what happens is many students now you will see the mathematics m1 m2 m3 you know the pain in the ass right why it was like this because all these concepts are required my dear yeah so let's say if you go here you require rotational moment of inertia what does that mean now please be careful understand this see whenever there is a beam here and the column here and whenever there is a bending moment you require certain things to resist whenever there is a force going imagine that there is a tension there has to be resistance that will be offered by the reinforcement which is coming inside that will be offered by the just now as i told you resistance in terms of the anchorage that will coming inside now in this war footing this is a war only what what is war there is a force and there is a resistance now imagine that there is a huge amount of force is there but resistance is only partial it is not fully like this it is only partial then what happens this much moment will release into the torque it will start spinning it will start rotating do you agree so that much amount of rotation will occur how it will be like somewhere it is i will just draw it with some different color so that it will be easy for you to understand maybe it will be something like this i'll draw it in a bigger pen the work will happen are you getting now this is because you are giving the only this much amount of resistance if you want to this is known as partial release function what is it called as partial release function so for that what you need to do is how much amount of force that you are applying and the amount of resistance which is known as rotational moment of inertia you need to calculate in the 3d space frame analysis in the 2d yes it is little bit okay it is possible at least you can calculate with certain stiffness matrix and all and you can just put these values over there but to calculate these values it is very very difficult and i would encourage you not to give any values over here it should be zero only understood how much it would be zero do not give any sort of values here 
So either it is because you don't want such kind of behavior, am I right? And do you want such kind of behavior? No. So what you do is, you give full release or you give zero release, fixed or fully released. Simple on the side. Now, to in order to imagine that you want this behavior which is partial release. Okay. So, how do we do that on the side? Imagine that in the worst to worst situation you want to have such kind of behavior to release some amount of bending moment. Maybe sometimes this particular bending moment will be converted into the bottom bending moment of the beam instead of really giving the torque. If that is your argument how to do this instead of the 50 times the diameter of the rebar you will give only let's say up to certain extent you need to go only here and only up to here. So some bars will come up to here some bars will be coming up to here. So how difficult it is on the site imagine that you are a site engineer some bars you need to take it as a L which is 50 times the diameter of the rebar. And some bars you need to take, let's say, around 35 times the diameter of the rebar. On the side, the site engineer will get annoyed also. Because it is very difficult to do it on the side. It's easy to make it uniform everywhere and just finish it off. But partial fixity, it is not possible to do it on the side. So that's the reason you consider this effect as a zero or you give certain you know or you unclick this option to consider this as a fixity like you know it is there over here are you getting what i'm saying okay so this is what actually the partial release function which i wanted to tell you now still if you want to have such kind of behavior of certain partial release you go to the stiffness modification factor we call it as smf Okay, where it is even little bit more under control. Okay, where it has to be done, how it has to be done. Okay, I'll not touch many topics on the, uh, in today's, otherwise it will be confusing for you. But stiffness modification factor means you go here. We'll be taking a very separate session for this, so don't uh, get tensed. Okay, you go to the modify the property here and there is an option here we call it as the stiffness modification factor. So if the release, torsion release if you want to do let's say 25 uh, percentage of the release you need to do. So you give 0.75 here. So this is much more control and you need don't need to take the headache of the calculation of the rotational moment of inertia of this beam, this, this beam and the column over here. Understood. So this is also a releasing function only in a little different way. Uh, we will come back to you on this when we will start with the stiffness modification factor. All right. Now this is about the the beam releases. What about the column releases? Let's say for example. I'll, I'll just hide a few things like let's say the walls, null shell elements also. Yeah. Let's say for example, I wanted to have the roller support here. So how do we, you know, connect this? You need to have some kind of element or let's say for example, there is no column here. I'll just delete it. Huh? And I'll give this as a zero restraint. So there are no restraints also. I'll just delete this. Now this column is a transfer on this beam. Alright. So I need to release this because I may not be able to give that much amount of fixity because it is coming from the beam. So for this column also, I have also done many a times that for column also you can give the releases at the particular edge do not I mean you, you are giving it m22 m33 okay if you give this over here you will see that it is happening at the start end also and at the end end also so don't do that because here you don't want that release to happen so 
at the end end just remove this and give this so it is at the start means it is fixed here this column is fixed here but this column is released here okay so whenever you are giving the such kind of uh, transfer girders and all so what do you do is so in in such kind of cases if i want to detail it i'll give the rebars like this and i'll give the rebars here at the bottom and the another beam rebars will go like this and the top rebars also it will go like this where this is you know your column and here you will you will be having the the stirrups and here also you will be having a closed space stirrups because you don't want this to have the so this is what is this this is the transfer beam so in such case also what happens is in imagine the anchorage length will be from this fiber down now this is basically the anchorage length so you will not get the enough anchorage at this place whenever there is a this is floating column this column is this column this beam is this beam understood because the, as you are having the column down there is no column here i have deleted the column here understood so in such kind of cases this has to be rested on the same column the same beam so in order to have such kind of behavior the anchorage length will be very less compared to the foundation even if you increase it it will not help you out so in such kind of cases what i'll do is i will make sure that it will take only the p u i will not consider the bending moment of this understood whatever the forces are there please transfer the forces so like bending moment diagram will be somewhere uh, this particular beam element the bending moment diagram will be somewhere like this it will be zero here and for this column the bend bmd of column which column this column and this is you know you know your bending moment so it will be maximum here and it will be zero here why zero because i don't want this anchorage to go down i mean it i cannot increase it so if such kind of situation is there that time you what we will do is you go here in the e types model and in the model you give the releases at this place how to give that you just select this you go to the analyze uh, sorry assign frame and there is a releases option assign frame and releases option so once you go here you will select only at this point or this point whatever the only start point as torsion i don't want minor bending moment also i don't want torsion also i don't want minor bending moment also i don't want major bending moment also at this edge i will like to have it this edge but i would not like to have this edge because there is nothing to resist here that sturdy foundation is not there is not this is a transfer girder this is not a foundation where you will get the base from all the sides so it will have the resistance in this direction this direction also it will not move in this direction it will not it is just a tiny beam which will probably take only the vertical action but it will not give you the resistance against the bending okay like this so what i'm saying is in such kind of situations for the columns also you require such kind of facility now imagine that there is a brace element then what to do so what is brace element this is the brace element imagine in case of uh, you know the steel structures and all when we will take certain steel structures into consideration during that time you will you can apply this kind of concepts in detail so what do you do here is let's say for example here i am giving this ishb such kind of sections and in such kind of sections do you want this to take the bending action no way right so what do you do is you give this as a releases in both the cases so that it will behave only part of 
the compression and tension elements it will only the compression or tension it will not start rotating understood so this is the behavior the only thing is you need to go for the non linear analysis to give that action and another thing is if you go here you need to give the tension and compression limits you give certain limits to the tension and compression whether certain elements you require the tension element only in that case you tension limit you give unlimited compression limit you give zero if you give zero as a compression element uh, limit means it will be a tension element only understood to clarify a little bit more i'll just i would like to just show you let us say that you are having a so this kind of truss here and there is a force here now whenever there is a force you know that there is a compression here right it would be a compression you don't want this to take the tension imagine that there is a tension like this also factor is there so in that case you see you what you will do is you select this element and you give the tension element as zero similarly whenever the force is here this guy this particular element will start going in that direction this there so there will be the tension here so compression will not be there so in such kind of cases you can give the compression as zero limit okay so like this kind of things you can do it or in in the reverse case in the very worst situation let's say for example you in you are applying the force here but you don't want this element to be considered as a compression element why because you want this elements to be rotated and this is just the tie connected to the this column and this column okay you don't want this to consider any sort of compression and tension action uh, sorry the the action which is the moment action and all so it is just the truss element which is just tying these two elements so this limit function you need to give the only thing is please this is very important only thing is what you need to do is once you give this you need to go to the let's say you are applying the dead load or any particular load you need to go for the non linear analysis from here you need to go for the non linear static because it is a iterative method what it is it is a iterative method so that's the reason you need to go for the non linear static where some p delta and other functions will be coming into the play that time it will do the uh tension element and compression element so this is how actually you will do the releases option in case of the brace elements understood so we have seen the action in when it there is a small beam the the uh, simply supported beam continuous beam and all we have seen the releases option in the column and the releases option in the in the cross elements the the, the brace elements understood got it so this is how the uh, release function is coming one more thing is if you want to release the slab for example i want to release this slab so what do you do is you go to you select the slab first then you go to the assign go to the slab here and there is a beautiful option over here we call it as the edge releases understood so you click go to this option edge releases and you can go to any uh, uh, particular option over here let's say for example over here edge releases at a particular edge so you can give the edge numbers and then you can give the certain amount of releases it is the same thing 1 1 2 2 3 3 the option and once you give that you will see that at this particular a edge the releases is happening this is one edge you go to the another fun, uh, uh, you know uh, you select this same thing and you again you go to the edge releases button you go to the let's say for example the next one and then you go to some particular this functions here and just apply so it is it is shifted from here to here right so this is how actually there is a get values from currently from the selected objects and many other functions are there here i'm sure that you if you can spend some 20 minutes on this you will get to 
uh, know this. This is in-plane force, this is out-of-plane force. We have already taken a lot of sessions in the in-plane, out-of-plane stiffness and all. You just spend some time so that, you know, uh, this edge releases functions also, you can utilize it from here. Where do you use this? Whenever, let's say for example, there is a beam here, or a sl sorry, slab here and a beam which is going down. This is a beam which is going down and the, there is another beam which is like this. So this bending moment will never go to this. The bending moment coming from this, this slab will never go to this slab, right? Like this it will not go. So in such kind of cases what we do is the bending moment of this will go to the beam not to the slab because this is not a continuous slab. What is this? This is not a continuous slab. So what we, we can do is in this kind of cases this is like this, this is like this. Okay. So the, the, the kind of uh, arrangement that we need to do it over here is this uh, slab will be having the release function here and this slab will be having the release function here at this edge. So like that what we have given it like this over here. Alright, so on, in the model it will be at one plane only, uh, one edge only but you will give the mathematical release at this function like this. Understood? Okay. Uh, you just need to practice this so that you know it will be very helpful for you please understand that whatever the functions i'm telling you here it is same it is available in the safe it is similar it is available in the sap 2000 also in many other softwares also like csi bridge and all that's why i'm going very slow as i told you that if you are knowing the etab software fantastically the operational level for the other softwares it becomes comparatively easier okay now We'll start with the certain doubt clearing sessions. Okay, so please, if you want to ask any of the doubts, you know, the time is now, please ask the doubt. I'm allowing you to unmute yourself so that you can ask the doubts. Yes, guys. Hello, hello sir. sir. Yes, hello. Please, uh, uh, on your camera, everyone. Thank you. Sir, sir, good yes. afternoon, Mahesh. Yeah, Mahesh, tell me. Sir, if you have a uh, wall, okay. here on the floating girdle, okay. so how, how we can, can release, release that, that bottom? bottom? If you don't want, want the movement to be there. Shear wall, you, unfortunately, like, releasing option is not available. Okay. Hmm. Uh, probably in the latest version they might have changed it. It's a very good question. Let me, you know, show you. Imagine that... Uh, let's say over here, I'm giving certain shear wall at this place. I think that option was not available before. from here to here, we are giving a shear wall to all the floors and now let's say this shear wall you need to give the release option so you select this shear wall and then you go to the edge releases option yeah it is yeah it is there sorry it's there okay. it was not there in the certain previous versions but they have added it but use it very carefully because shear wall release uh, is very dangerous option okay <laughs> okay any other question anybody yes but yesterday what the process and assignment was given yes in that uh, case, uh, Servo 2 releases for trust, releases to every member. Okay. But, but when you give the releases, if you, uh, but you need to give that actually after giving the releases, you need to give the uh, tension and compression limits also. If you give tension limit as zero, it will become a compression element. 
Okay, but when we run the analysis, it gives us instability. Yeah, probably you might have given the space frame in that case. See, first thing is, in the yesterday's module, we have given one truss actually. So, what you do is, you go here. Yes, yes. And here you need to give XZ or YZ plane. If you forget this, then if you go to the space frame, then it will give you the instability warning. But if you go to the XZ, YZ plane, it won't give you. Just check it out. Even though after giving this, if it is showing you or if it is giving you warning, then you can show me the model, I will just look into it. And one more thing is I told you, since you are giving tension and compression limits, you need to go for the non-linear analysis. Okay. Otherwise, it won't take it. I can give you the example, uh, not now, but maybe a little later on. Uh, but, uh, okay. you know, you need to do the non-linear analysis for that. Okay, any other question? Yes? No questions? Hello, sir. Yes. Yes, Abdar? Uh, okay, 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 you, you can carry on, no problem. Yes, Sujan. Yes, sir. सर जब हम बीम रिलीज़ देते हैं सेकेंडरी बीम में रिलीज़ देना आता है लेकिन जब टर्सियर टर्सियर बीम से टर्सियर बीम और उससे ज़्यादा बीम आ जाता है तब कौन सा बीम में कैसा रिलीज़ दे वो कॉन्फ्यूज़ हो जाता है सर कॉन्फ्यूज़न हटाने के लिए आपको सी इफ यू आर गेटिंग कॉन्फ्यूज़ structure whatever the beams that you are giving is it uh, how much bending moment it is taking and all actually you check just check the natural behavior if you give the fixed element every element is a fixed element unless and until you give the release option over there all right so what you do is i i, I would like to suggest you that you give the uh, uh, fixed option you run the analysis if you are getting confused and then check the behavior that which is primary, which is the force is transferring from primary to secondary, uh, sorry, from secondary to primary and primary to the mainframe elements and then it goes to the columns to the foundation. So a load path decision is little difficult at the initial phase of the career. I'm sh uh, I know that it's a, um, you know, it's difficult task, but you need to deal with this. How to deal with this, I'll tell you. you uh, you give the releases, don't give the releases, you run the analysis, get the results and then you apply, uh, okay, I will consider this as a primary, this as a secondary, something like that. So you will fix up the load path based on the natural behavior. So you don't make the Sachin Tendulkar as a Lata Mangeshkar, you know. So the behavior of the, you know, structure is like this. So you make sure that you are, you know, moving the, uh, the, 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 uh, certain main beam elements in the main direction only, profound main directions, like that it is. I hope you are getting what I am saying. You see the natural behavior that this particular beam is a fixed beam. The behavior of this person is like, you know, he is a cricketer. So let us not put it in the some other place. So take the natural instinct of the behavior and then you apply certain, uh, you know, uh, these kind of controlling situations because it's sometimes yes it becomes risky it becomes annoyed also it becomes uh, you know uh, because it gives you this kind of warning which you know Mahesh uh, has told that you know why annoyed because so many times you run the analysis it gives you so many warnings why because you are not applying these parameters these are compelling parameters please understand these are not the natural behavior natural behavior parameters you don't need to do anything, you just run the analysis, get the results. So the behavior of the structure will remain same. The moment you give releases, you are telling structure, you behave like this. It is like instructing a child that, you know, not to do like this and like that. You know, that rebelling attitude will come over the period of time. So similarly, the structure will not rebel in that way, but it will give you so many warnings and, you know, instability issues and all actually. So how to correct that? You get the natural behavior first and then try to correct it in a very decent way. That's how it is. Yeah. 
Yes, anybody? Yes. Can you hear me, sir? Yes, Abra. One by one. Sir, sir, when we are releasing moments at the end, when if you are not releasing the torsion, what will be the behavior at the side? How it will be behaved? Or we have to give any extra value? No, side there is no behavior. On the side, what happens? Initially, in the during the casting, nothing will because there are propping, right? Back props yeah. and all, but later on after the casting and after everything gets over, if you are not giving that anchorage, the rotation will start. That's what I. I that's the point actually. I, I have explained you just few minutes back. The rotation so will start. The, the, the structure will start behaving, or structure will start acting rather. Acting means the work will done. The work means the rotation. You might have seen certain beams also. It, the the structure is behaving like this. It will be you know rotation has happened. Or maybe you can just go to the Google Images, wherein you will see that the beams rotation has happened on the site. Through that, you can find out the 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 you know. Oh my God, I've given the releases, but on the site it is not happening that way. Sir, uh, sir, sir torsion release is optional. optional. Uh, uh, yeah, torsion release is optional. Correct. Initially, don't give the torsion release. Okay, but uh, if there is a thin shell element slab is there, what happens is if there is a slab here, slab here, and there is a beam here. Let's say there is a beam here like this. If you are releasing, if you are uh, releasing the torsion, for example, what will happen is it will uh, the, the slab will take the the uh, bending moment. So if there is a thin shell element at the both the places or at least at one place, you know that L action will happen or the T action will happen. All right. Okay. Yes. Uh, suppose that we have a continuous uh, a secondary beam, sir. Uh -huh. uh, is it wise to release the moments in the in the continuous portion? Uh, see, if you are giving the rebar straight, so that's what you need to imagine the site conditions. If you are giving the yes. rebar straight, actually it will be like a straight of a continuous beam only. Yes. Whereas on the side yes, you need to cut the rebar in between and again take the another rebar like that you need to do, right? Otherwise it will transfer the bending moment. Another thing is I will tell you yes, in this yes. what happens is even if on the side you don't cut it, for example, how much is the is the uh, is the anchorage length that you need to calculate? If the anchorage length is less, you don't need to physically cut it. It will behave like a, a simply supported beam only, because it is not having a capacity to take the extra hogging bending moment. Okay. Understood. So even if on the side they do the continuous rebar, so it depends upon the width and the, you know that kind of action that you need to see the realistic structure. Take the natural behavior. This particular bending moment you require such a big anchorage. It is not possible to be you know there on the side. So let's consider this as a continuous, uh, a simply supported beam only. After uh, you know going for simply supported beam, you will get the bottom steel in a uh, you know realistic. Okay, otherwise the bottom steel you are under designing it. That's the point which I have explained to you. Uh, please watch these kind of videos a couple of times more for you to digest it. Otherwise, you know it becomes a big problem for you later on. Yeah. Understood. See, releases function. If you know in the workshops, you know I've given three diagrams, and you know we have wrapped it. But currently, if you know the in the advanced and in the certain uh, sessions, we conduct this kind of thing. When you come to the physical sessions, but I have covered most of the things right now. So I hope you know it is uh, easy for you to. You know, understand it. Yes, any question, anybody? Sir, yes, so in the case yes. of uh, some kind slabs in WC, do we need to give edge releases? In the yes, because it they preferred. are. It's preferred. Okay. Because we have not given a till now. Yeah, but how much that it? effect is coming? You can calculate it. See what happens is. The effect is there, but it is hardly anything. Uh, if you are having a small scratch, you don't go to the hospital, right? Oh my God! Take a surgeon appointment and all. So the effect is very nominal. Why the question is coming? Because you need to do that kind of practice. You give, you add the releases or don't give the releases. What's the effect? You identify that. Oh my God! Just forget it. Don't worry. Okay. But in certain cases, the effect might be predominant. So in that case, you need to calculate it. There is a folding slab or you know some. It might be any kind of situation for any project. All right. Okay. Any any question? Other question? Anybody? No. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Good afternoon, sir. Good afternoon, yes.
Sir, in RCC, we have this simply subjected payment success. Sir, what is the difference? How we detail this? Where we detail the this fixed payment simply support. That's what I told you, you know, the, the simply supported beam, the bottom steel will be more predominant. So uh, at the center of the portion, the bending moment will be higher. So you will give additional rebars at the bottom fiber of the beam. But whereas the fixed beam, you require the additional rebars on the hogging portion at the top portion also. So that sir, is some, sir, sir, some people say that the uh, only difference in the anchorage. The anchorage. Yes. So if you provide a good etiquette, anchorage length. For the development uh, bond stress, then we get this uh, fixed demand simply support. But sir, there might be some issues but if we don't provide the adequate reinforcement in the edges. Yeah, I mean, so this is, you know, yeah, yeah, I know what you are saying actually. See, what happens is now this is a very important point and this is a very advanced point also. Please uh, you know, pay attention here properly. Now, there is an incident that, uh, you know, let's say for example, this is the, this is the uh, transfer girder, okay, and this is the fixed element here. So, in that case, you know that there would be, you know, this kind of bending moment will be there, but if it is a simply supported beam, but if it is a fixed beam, what will happen is, you will have the bending moment like this. So, if you know the HRC committee in Mumbai, which is high-rise yeah. committee in Mumbai, what they do is, yeah, please mute yourself, thank you. What they do is, if such kind of situation is there, if such kind of situation is there, we, we provide the, at this edge and at this edge, there would be hinge support initially. So, the bottom steel, will be designed for this bending moment will be there there will be extra rebars but the top steel would be considered it as a fixed so even if there is a creep factor and some of the other factors are there so what happens is even if the releasing option is happening the bottom steel is designed for that because there is a huge amount of transfer girder is happening Suppose if you do not consider this effect because there is a column here, there is a fixed support here. So what happens is this bottom steel, it will be uh, or the bottom bending moment will be transferred to the top like this. This bending moment will be reduced. If it is released, what will happen? This is the bending moment. If it is released. If it is not released, this will be reduced to here and this extra bending moment will be transferred to the top fiber. So what the committee, HRC committee is saying intellectually is, no. let's say for example, you are having the such kind of case, you give the top steel, extra top steel like this also and you give the bottom steel also like this because there is a vertical point load here so you are designing because this is one of the key element you design for this also and you design for this also always play safe so even if let's say tension is there right huge amount of so let's say there are huge amount of cracks has happened and all the bottom steel will be taken care bottom steel will be take care of this particular curve so there will not be excessive settlement that will happen that will be discarded by them this is one of the rule by hrc committee all right so i think uh, this would help you to understand probably certain concepts which we are trying to tell you because you know anchorage length how far it is true that will happen on the side depending upon that actually you will decide the bottom steel that's what the question was right so how much is the anchorage length on the site and all actually will be provided and how far it will be you know considered to be the resisting element for this this torsion uh, this tension if it is not there if you are not sure that this 
this extra rebars or anchorage will be there here because sometimes you know the the, the size of the columns is very less this length is very less there are rebars in the columns also so it is you are not sure that this much amount of torch uh, the the anchorage length will be possible okay no problem you designed bottom steel extra for that so there is no excessive settlement which will you know which will create the strain in the building if you if the settlement is happening it will transfer that strain to the upper floor right any other question i hope subdar the doubt is clear yes subdar tell me ah yes you can unmute yourself so, so yeah, i was uh, reading one, one book and there it was written that your uh, secondary, secondary beam bars main bar should bar always go inside, inside below, below the, the main beam, beam bar, bar. No, no, no. The the secondary rebar should come above the main rebar, not the below. I am one hundred percent confident about it. The secondary rebars, let's say for example, this is the main beam, this is the secondary beam. No, no, no. Chalo, chalo. The secondary rebar should come on the top of the main rebar. So that this shear force will be transferred to this. Understood. So in the slabs also it is like this, right? The secondary rebars has to be above the main rebar, so that the shear force will be from here to here. It will be transferred, and this rebars will take the shear action. Imagine this is not the situation. The another is the situation. So let's say this is the main beam, and there is another beam also. This is the main beam, and this is another beam. This is secondary beam. Both are having same depths. So this rebar, which is the secondary rebar, secondary beam rebar. it should not come down if it is coming down how the force will go from this rebar to this rebar understood it has to come up this rebar has to come up so that it will transfer the shear force the stresses to this rebar so the secondary beam and this is primary beam it will transfer the shear force from here to here in the in the diagram it will be like this suppose if it is released the force actually the beam the shear force of this beam has to be transferred to this beam okay so please make sure that your concepts are proper okay otherwise there will be huge problems all right so then any anybody else one minute i'll just see if you are asking the doubts then only unmute your mic otherwise there would be so many i know that many people are at home so background music will be there yes anybody any doubt uh, so uh, for uh, the reason of actions of fixity to frame members uh, if we give zero is it constraint or restraint like uh, if we put zero value with uh, it access in the support of it so you mean to say you are giving releases with the value zero Yeah. If, if it is zero, it's if it is zero, or it's so it is released. 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 Yes. Zero means there is no resistance offered by the another element to this. So, so, so if it gives zero, it's fully released. Fully released. Yes. Any any other another doubt? Anyone? Hello. Hello. Yes. Sir, Deepak here. Sir, good afternoon. Yeah. Good afternoon. Yeah. Uh, sir, suppose we are providing a secondary beam as a cantilever. In that, uh, in this, in that condition, uh, we should provide end releases or not? Yes, so there is a one beam is coming to continuous, and this is going to the cantilever portion. So in that cantilever, we can provide end releases or not? End, uh, you don't need to. Even if you give, it doesn't matter much. So you, what you do is, if you are, if you want to have the severity of that, you give the fixed support. Fixed means don't give any releases. Run the analysis. Check the bending moment diagram. BMD diagram you need to check it everyone you should be familiar about the BMD bending moment diagram if you are familiar with the BMD diagrams then it will be easy for you to understand the behavior of the structure so many a times when you go to the interview rounds why they ask you the BMD diagram is because how much understanding you are having the, about the behavior of the structure understood so what you do is you run the analysis without any releases okay 
and then take the call that whether uh, it is required or not i'll give you a right example because i think through the example you guys will understand even further better so let's say this is the example i'll just delete all the walls because those walls are not required okay i deleted all the walls and i will select all the edges and uh, make sure that there is no any edge release option is available so i'll just uh, reset all the default values everyone so that if you remember i gave a certain release option over here i'll take this column also down because i've done some nasty things here in the previous this thing so this is okay fine so if this is you know your model and uh, let's say we come to this part i'll run the analysis quickly you need to see the severity otherwise there is no point in releasing and wasting your time please understand that sometimes it is easy to ignore so let's say this is the beam okay and you forgotten to release it how and i'll just right click it and see that how much is the bending moment so 13 kilometer meter is the bending moment at this edge and here it is 6 or 7 so this 13 kN meter bending moment it has to come down that has not happened so this is how much 6 6 to 7 something 6.01 or 6.1 so what do we do is we 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 will unlock the model we'll give these two beams as a released i mean this is before and after post release and pre release information so 13 and 6 was the bending moment now after releasing what what is the thing that you are getting see here so 13 6 has become 15 am i right so this is the bending moment that you wanting to have it for this beam so 6 kN meter bending moment has become 16 which is huge whereas at this place it is zero which is expected at this edge it is and this edge it is zero okay so many a times seeing is believing okay don't believe on me whatever i'm saying you do the small your study for this and then you you know make your own judgments that will be staying with you always got it yes any other doubt i hope release is full released no questions now yes <laughs> so that is known as crystal clarity okay watch this kind of videos couple of times so that you know there are any kind of primary secondary beams and all the th things that uh, kind of questions that you are getting or anybody is asking you know it will be through all right so please don't miss any sessions post lunch sessions also like uh, you know our uh, civil studio sessions where we are doing certain uh, you know small small assignments we are giving it to the students i have identified some students are not coming there please do come there so that you know certain doubt clearing will happen there also okay four hours a day you please spend up so that uh, you know you will have a different uh, you know understanding of the structures so i hope you have enjoyed the session thank you very much okay see you tomorrow bye bye